So we chose this term as part of our motto, post luminium, for consanguinity. Um, the definition of post luminium is the right of post luminium is that in virtue of which persons and things taken by the enemy are restored to their former state, now coming again into the power of the nation to which they belong. So when we say post luminium, in post luminium per consanguinity, that's our motto. And then we have that on our constitution, which is the law of restoration. So law of restoration is an affirmation of post luminium. Our entire constitution is an affirmation of post luminium. By virtue of which persons and things taken by the enemy are restored to their former state, now coming again into the power of the nation to which they belong. So when we talk about post luminium, we're talking about being restored to our natural state. Right. Okay. Now this is all. This is a term that's used in relationship to war, uh, to having been in war, to having been defeated, so so to speak. And in a sense, we are still at war with the United States because we have been out of our proper person. Okay. But even still, we haven't been out of our nationality or our pedigree, okay? The war has been a war without bullets in some instances, okay? It's been a war on our minds, it's been a war on our bodies in terms of the food, the water, the air. It's been a war on our psyches, it's been a war on our health. Everything in this society is weaponized in order to effectuate controls. Okay, so in the midst of all of that, and because we have established our own provincial state government, we have the right of post luminium. We have the right to be restored to our original state, our former state, because we can claim it, because we are in our proper standing to claim it as a nation, as a state. Okay. Now, we talk about post luminium per consanguinity. It's on our, uh, our seal. Consanguinity is key because we have the right of post luminium because we are who we are, because we are Moors, because we have a nationality, because we have a nation that we pledged our allegiance and oath to, okay? We have the right to post luminium. We have the right to be restored. Okay? When you look at the larger picture and you look at Morocco having been defeated, we are Morocco arising and we have the right to be restored. You see? Um, you've heard a lot about uh, an organization called the Rise of the Moors. It's a great term. The Rise of the Moors. That's what's happening. And even that term right there is a term which denotes post luminium but in order to claim post luminium you have to have a nation a state a constitution elected officials a flag and a seal um, all the other accoutrements that make a nation effective in the world and effective in relationship to other states in the world okay so to go on with this document, the sovereign is bound to protect the persons and property of his subjects and to, to defend them against the enemy. When, therefore, a subject or any part of his property has fallen into the enemy's possession, should any fortunate event bring them again into the sovereign's power, the sovereign being our nation, our state, it is undoubtedly his duty to restore them to their former condition, to reestablish the persons in all their rights and obligations, to give back the effects to the owners, in a word, to replace everything on the same footing on which it stood previous to the enemy's capture. So when were we captured as a people and stripped of knowledge of our nationality, of our birthright, our pedigree? When did that happen? We, you can go as far to 
1492. That's one. We can say 1774. You can say 1648. You can say, I mean, there's many markers in there. But that's when, see, the, the war against our minds is convinced, we were convinced that we were black colored Negro. And that right there is an act of genocide. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when that act is over, when we've overcome that, then we can be restored by the sovereign. Now, the, uh, the nation that defeated us is not the sovereign. They're the conqueror. But the sovereign has the right to restore the people to their to their previous status and station, you see, and restore their property. That's the right of post -luminium. So when you look at the nation, when you look at World War I, World War II, and other, other wars that there have been, there's always afterwards, the parties that are defeated get rebuilt. Germany got rebuilt. Um, even Italy and um, with Spain, they got rebuilt after World War II. Japan, Japan got rebuilt, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that was done because of the principle of post luminium mm -hmm. And so what's happened is with our people is we want, our people are trying to get reparations. Reparations cannot be achieved without a nation, without a state. And if there's no state, there can't be any reparation. Reparations means to repair a nation. It's an act of post luminium So there's no nation, so that you have a lot of individuals claiming some right that they don't have, especially in their defeated status. And they have, they're, not, they're not acknowledging a sovereign in order to protect and derive their benefit from, you see. Okay, the justice or injustice of the war makes no difference in this case. Not only because according to the voluntary law of nations, the war as to its effects is reputed just on both sides, reputed just on both sides. But likewise, because war, whether just or not, is a national concern, and if the subjects who fight or suffer in the national cause should, after they have, either in their persons or their property, fallen into the enemy's power, be by some fortunate incident restored to the hands of their own people, there is no reason why they should not be restored to their former condition. It is the same as if they had never been taken. If the war be just on the part of their nation, they were unjustly captured by the enemy and thus nothing is more natural than to restore them as soon as it becomes possible. If the war be unjust, they are under no greater obligation to suffer in atonement for its injustice than the rest of the nation. Fortune brings down the evil on their heads when they are taken. She delivers them from it when they escape. Here again, it is the same as if they never had been captured. Neither their own sovereign nor the enemy has any particular right over them. The enemy has lost by one accident that he had gained by another. So, it doesn't matter whether, see, we can get caught up in whether the war was just or unjust. That's irrelevant. Right. Okay? When it's, when it's over, the survivors can return to their country if their country is intact and be restored. And so the, so the nation that defeated to bring the balance has to restore that nation and the people in it as best as possible to their former status, to their former station, as though they had been, as though, as though it had not been. And they go back to what it was before. You see, now, even if we had known who we are, there would still be several nations. Exactly. You see, you would have those, you would have Moors that came, that escaped from France during the Thirty Years' War. You would have Moors from France here that escaped 
uh, when the Republic, uh, when the Revolution took place. You in see, Britain? in in France, you have okay, yeah. you have uh, there were Irish and Scots that escaped or were sent over here as indentured that were Moors. That would be a nation, and then you'd have nation of Aboriginal people. Nations that would form, that have that would have already in existence, so you have so many different nations still, because there are so many different ways that our people came here and were already here. Right. You see, and each one has the right of post luminium under the conditions of statehood. That's the key. Now this sentence, it says, neither their own sovereign nor the enemy has any particular right over them. Neither their own sovereign nor the enemy has any particular right over them. Right. So AMPAC and the enemy have no right over the people, except to restore the people. Mm -hmm. you see? That's it. So the enemy has lost by one accident that he had gained by another. He won the war, but he has to restore the nation. See, when we that's why we're taking the steps we're taking, so that when it comes time for us to make that claim, we have international law behind us, we have allies behind us, we have, you know, there's other ideally other provincial governments, Moorish governments that will have established themselves. And there will maybe at some point be a caucus mm -hmm. that could provide a body of politic, body politic body that can enforce on the international level the rights of post luminium for our people. Okay, next paragraph. Persons return and things are recovered by the right of post luminium when after having been taken by the enemy, they come again into a power of their own nation. This right, therefore, takes effect as soon as such persons or things captured by the enemy fall into the hands of soldiers belonging to their own nation or are brought back to the army, the camp, the territories of their sovereign or places under his command. So, your own cannot claim booty and prize on your estate. Neither can the sovereign claim booty and prize over your estate. Do you get what I mean? The enemy conquered and won the war. But even there, there has to be restoration. You see? Even there, things that were taken in booty and prize, once, once certain things are in place, they have to return those things. We've seen that happen. Okay? Now, in some cases, there have been resistance. Recently, we've seen some uh, Benin uh, items return, uh, Benin artifacts return to Benin. Uh, for, I think France has returned a bunch of them. Um, England did not. England hasn't returned anything. In, in Tangier, the, um, the skulls that yeah. were, that were um, held in France mm -hmm. are being returned. Yeah. You know, after many, many years of, of you know, wrestling with mm -hmm. one another over there. And then there are some First Nations people who have gotten um, mm -hmm. remains, remains of, of their people returned to them so that they could do an, inter an, a, a, an internment ceremony, mm -hmm. you know. Didn't they get some totems back also? I think so. I think certain things are taken from the Northwest. Yeah. And there's other things. And those are, those are small concessions against the backdrop of, of genocide. You see, small concessions. So once, uh, one of the things that comes up, this is a very comprehensive piece because it goes through a, a lot of different contingencies. Is this still in chapter uh, 13? This is chapter 14, book 3, Law of Nations, so by Emir Batel, B-A-T-E-T-E-L. Chapter 
Book 3. Those who unite with us to carry on a war are joint parties with us. We are engaged in a common cause. Our right is one and the same, and they are considered as making but one body with us. Therefore, when persons or things captured by the enemy are retaken by our allies or auxiliaries, or in any other manner fallen into their hands, this, so far as relates to the effect of the right, or post -luminium, is precisely the same thing as if they were come again into our own power. Since in the cause in which we are jointly embarked, our power and that of our allies is but one and the same. The right of post -luminium, therefore, takes effect among those who carry on the war in conjunction with us, and the persons and things recovered by them from the enemy are to be restored to their former condition. So this is another instant, instance. It's, it's going to go through a lot of different contingencies. So this is an instance where if we were at war and France was our ally, and after the war was over, France came into the possession of certain things that belonged to our nation, those things would have to be returned, you see, and then restored as they were <coughs> as if before the war, okay. you see. So that defines the relationships of parties who are jointly working together in a war to fight a common enemy, you see. Let's take a look at this. Take a look at, take a look at Morocco in relationship to post luminium okay? Morocco was defeated around 1850, 1860. You could even say, you could, you could almost, depending on how well the history, you want to get into the history, but you could say that the winning of the revolutionary, the, the Civil War by the North was actually a defeat of the Moors from the South. Mm. That's one way you could look at it. But what's happened since then is, and France was on the, on the side, well, France was on the side of the South, I believe. So France, and, there was, and up until the Civil War, Politically, the South was controlled by quote unquote black colored Negro people. Just by the fact that they had a majority of population and they had political powers. But those, those p persons were not properly classified or designated as to who they actually were in terms of their pedigree. Right. You see? So. France was on that side. So France, being a protectorate of Morocco, stepped in. And then what's happened is, ever since that time, the treaties that have come after that have been to restore Morocco to its former status without its former power and without its ability to uh, violate the treaty. Morocco cannot violate the treaty, you see. It cannot. Because we know that our that Morocco, and it wasn't necessarily Morocco, the king, the empire that was doing this. It was uh, merchants, it was seamen, it was uh, Barbary ships that were out pillaging, pirates, um, and they were out pillaging everybody. You see, and that's why everybody wanted to have these treaties so they could traverse the waterways without being pillaged. And sometimes they still got pillaged, you see. So the French protectorate was necessary to put a rein on that. And then also there was restoration that had to happen. So the 1880 treaty, right of protection in Morocco, spells out specifically what the relationships are with the council, with councils, with the consulates, with the uh, foreign ministers, with the uh, charge de affairs, the protectorates, with all of that, who's, who was protected and so forth, and how those, that protection was extended. And, and there are certain things in those treaties that we need to carry out and abide by. And we're about doing that, okay? Um, the, tr the Treaty of Algeciras, the Act of Algeciras in 1906, went through several sections where they dealt specifically with restoring uh, Morocco in terms of its police power, 
terms of its economic structure, in terms of its how it dealt with its land, who could buy land, who couldn't buy land, and all of those, there's so many other aspects of governance that were in that treaty. And it was a multilateral treaty. So all the nations came in and said, okay, we're gonna restore you to your status, but we're gonna put constraints on you at the same time. Okay, so it was a, it was a, it was post luminium after being defeated, returning them to their natural status. That's why you can go to Morocco, kingdom of Morocco today, and be there as a tourist in Marrakesh and Fez and other places, you see, because they have been restored through post luminium. Next paragraph. But does this right take place in the territories of our allies? Here a distinction arises. If those allies make a common cause with us, if they are associates in the war, we are necessarily entitled to the right of post luminium in their territories as well as in our own. For their state is united with ours. And together with it constitutes but one party in the war we carry on. But if, as in our times, is frequently the practice, an ally only gives us a stated succor stipulated by treaty and does not himself come to a, rup a rupture with our enemy, between whose state and his own, in their immediate relations, peace continues to be observed. In this case, only the auxiliaries whom he sends to our assistance are partakers and associates in the war and his dominions remain in a state of neutrality. So this is, this is relating to post luminium, the right of post luminium applying to auxiliaries who are sent to assist in a, in a war situation. The actual nation that sent those auxiliaries is not necessarily jumping into the war because they have treaty with the other nation and they want to maintain a semblance simulacrum, I like that word, of neutrality, okay? But still, the primary parties remain and retain the right of post luminium in the territories of their ally as well. So if something happens and they can't be restored in their own territory, then they, they can be restored in that of the ally without, because without the ally having to give up its treaty status of peaceful relationships with the enemy. You see how these relationships become very, they can seem very complicated, but in reality, it's not complicated. Uh, one of our elders used to say, life's a piece of cake, humans mess it up. Okay. Now, the right of post luminium does not take effect in neutral countries. For when a nation chooses to remain neutral in a war, she is bound to consider it as equally just on both sides, so far as relates to its effects, and consequently to look upon every capture made by either party as a lawful acquisition, to allow one of the parties, in prejudice to the other, to enjoy in her dominions the right of claiming things taken by the latter, or the right of post luminium would be declaring in favor of the former and departing from the line of neutrality. Did you get that? No. Okay. If a country is claiming to be neutral, mm -hmm. like Sweden, okay, Sweden is neutral, but if Sweden gave refuge to certain soldiers of one country, but didn't give refuge to other soldiers of another country, Sweden gives up their neutrality. You see? And so then they become a party to the war. And so then they have to make, they have to make, they have to fulfill the right of post luminium by making sure you're restored because they took sides. Mm -hmm. If they had not taken sides, they would not have to be involved in your restoration. So that's why it says, um, consequently, to look upon every cash made by either party as a lawful acquisition. Right. Gotcha. 
So it's either way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we, that was just. That was just. Okay, it's war. So. So in that regard, everyone that was affected by that of that that incident should have been restored. Had the right of postlaminium. You see, it's like when a policy enforcer does something, um, and like here in Colorado, they can't claim claim qualified immunity if it, if they are obviously violating your rights. You have the right to lean them. You see, that's postlaminium to be restored as to where you were before, you see. That's the it's same basic principle, okay? Who wrote this? Mm -hmm. Emir Vatel, a Frenchman. <laughs> oh. Yeah, what have we been, we've been every, the Vienna Convention, um, Rights of Indigenous People, Declaration of Human Rights, Rights of the Child, rights uh, against the, for the elimination of genocide, you name it. France's signature is all over it. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I am Gabon de Boisset Bay. Haji.